History talks about different civilizations at different times. Civilizations were indeed the periods that developed humanity in various fields, including culture. Denime ancestors must have once lived in a period of a civilization, since Denime culture is considered to be a refined one. In Tenime society, all are equal. There is no class or caste system. The rich and the poor, the strong and the weak, all can sit and eat together, though elders are normally given the honor to be first in everything. In a village setup, the truth always prevails. No matter how strong or rich a person may be, he can neither control the people with his strength nor influence with his wealth. The village is controlled by the wisdom of few elders who make just and unbiased decisions, and these decisions become the voice of the people, or in other words, the law of the village. No one can go against this voice of the people. Anyone who goes against such decision will isolate himself from the society. Therefore, the voice of the people is supreme, which unites the society to stand and act together. Every Tenime village is self-contained producing all its need from the fields. The people live in harmony and help each other in times of need. A village is therefore more or less a republic in itself. Others cannot interfere in its laws. The Tenime culture is of high order which is slowly diminishing under the context of transformation of society. And therefore, it has become crucial for young generations to preserve and make serious attempt to recapture the values of our culture. Hello students, today we will be discussing about some positive values that were traditionally practiced and honored by the Tenime Nagas. These values are ones that we can rediscover and practice in our daily lives. According to the beliefs of the Tenimes, there are many different kinds of spirits. Some were good, some were bad. It was believed that man and spirit lived together. However, spirit was stronger than the man. And so, man lived in fear in front of the spirits. They lived and acted their whole lives to please the spirits. But above all spirits, the Nime forefathers believed in one supreme God who was the creator of all things. One particular value I want to focus on is Kenne. So what is Kenne? In English, the words that come closest to describing it are taboo, or forbidden. There is no word that exactly describes it to its true meaning. Kenne is considered as sacred and revered. Kenne is used to refrain people from doing things that should not be done. It has religious roots and also controls the social system. Kenne helps in maintaining order and discipline. Here I want to cite an example of Kenne. It is said that if you see a wormwood plant plucked and kept on top of an object, or if you see a ball of leaves kept on any item, you should not take that object away as it has been cleaned by another person. It is considered kenne to do so. There are many situations where kenne is imposed. Some of these are It is kenne to laugh at someone's disability. 
it is kenne to call your parents or elders by their name. It is also kenne to send them to do chores for you. It is kenne to block major roads, public wells, or remove land boundary stones. When someone goes ahead and does something that is considered forbidden or kenne, it is believed that the anger of the spirits fall upon them and they are cursed for generations. They can also face misfortune or their lives can be shortened. This is the reason why kenne is taken very seriously. Kejetho. Kejetho is to be honest and righteous in one's character, conduct and way of life. Because of these values, a Kejetho or honest person is naturally considered trustworthy. In Tinyimir society, a man of integrity or a Kejetho person is highly respected and even looked upon as a leader. Let me share some examples of Kedieto with you. In olden times, when villagers went to their fields, they never locked their doors. It was because they trusted each other and people were generally honest. If anything was borrowed, extra care was taken to make sure that it is returned on time and in good condition. If it is damaged, it is replaced with a good one or one that is as good or even better than the one that was damaged. When the owner of a field is absent, the person working in his field will work harder to avoid any complaints. This is to make sure that the owner is happy with his work. This also signifies that he is a Gejoto person. Such were the normal ways of life in the Tinyimia society. Gejoto is an essential value that encourages integrity, accountability to oneself, God, and society. When one practices Ketieto, prosperity always follows. Ketzenga Ketzenga is to be polite or courteous in one's way of life without causing shame to oneself. In Tengimia society, it is shameful to boast or show off one's wealth or wisdom. It is also considered shameful to claim a bigger or better share. For example, if a group of people were to go to the forest to carry wood, it would be shameful for the first person to pick up the lightest load. Most animes would practice Kedzunga by picking up the heaviest and biggest load and leaving the lighter load for his friends. When a community is feasting together, it is considered shameful to choose the meat of your choice. A tenyimir would practice Kedzunga by accepting whatever is being served and not being choosy. When it comes to food, it is also considered shameful to eat without working. Respect for elders is a key element in tenyimir society. In a public gathering or meeting, it is considered shameful for young people to speak first before the elders speak. It is also considered shameful for young people to take a seat first before the elders get a seat. In such a situation, a young Tenyume is expected to practice Kedzunga by offering his seat to the elders. Courtesy, gratitude, and selflessness are important life lessons that we can practice in our daily lives. In doing so, we will be reviving Kedzunga, an important value of our forefathers, even in our present day. Ketije. Ketije is to be gracious, respectful, and appreciative. It is giving up one's privilege for the good of others. Ketije is unique to Tengimia society. It holds an integral part of this community. It is because of this value that a peaceful coexistence is maintained. For example, 
When you respect and appreciate your brothers and sisters, there is harmony within the family. This is the result of Ketheje. In the past, when people give things to each other, they try to politely refuse it before accepting it. But upon insistence, they receive in a very gracious manner. It is not simply saying thank you, but also appreciating the good that's done to them. And in situation when it is possible, one normally gives something back. I want to cite another situation to you. In case of an accident, when a person is found guilty, he will not defend himself, but ask for forgiveness. This enables even very serious crimes to be forgiven. The forgiven person makes sure that he goes out of his way to personally thank the other party for the undeserving pardon. This is a good example of a person who practices Ketheje. Ketheje puts the welfare of other people first and practices restraint. By being humble and appreciative, people naturally respect each other. And in today's context, Ketheje can be encouraged by simple usage of words like please, sorry, and thank you. So my dear students, we have just learned some values that are practiced by the Tenines. We can see that there is a lot that we can learn from these lessons. Let me take you very quickly to the topics that were covered. First, Kenne. This forbids people from doing certain acts. Two, Kedieto. Is to practice honesty and integrity as a way of life. 3. Kedzunga is to practice courtesy and avoid causing shame to oneself, one's family, village, and clan. Fourth, and finally, Ketezie, which means being respectful and appreciative of others. We are living in a time where there is a lot of influence from other foreign cultures. It is no doubt important that we embrace the good qualities of others but let us not forget the values that have brought us so far. These are the pillars that have built our society and we need to hold them very close to our hearts. Our culture is our identity and without it, we are lost. <laughs>